So, uh, has this question been floating around on the uh, on the YouTube? Of uh, it was asked by Alex, our uh, good friend, uh, Nintendo Arcade, Captain Sky Skipper. And uh, he's got a couple of nice uh, arcade cabinets, and um, I'm hearing something. Something's ticking. Uh, anyway, uh, arcade cabinets, uh, but but really proper ones, uh, uh, restored ones, real Nintendo ones, you know, and. Uh, he, he sort of does the woodwork himself and it, it all looks nice and I, I also watch uh, TNT amusements you know the these guys are in the United States and they and they restore uh, pinball machines and also uh, arcade machines uh, and I, I I like that I respect that I, I think that's cool if, if I could do it if I had the time and if I had the skills and the motivation to do it, I would. I've got two arcade cabinets sitting right here. Um, as arcade cabinets go, they are crap. I mean, I've got an old Dodgem. I think that was made by Zaccaria, which is an Italian company who also made the Crazy Kong cabinet. So that's nice. And I've got one really generic cabaret thing uh, it, it has uh, video fun on the marquee, which is really lame. But there are cabinets, which I thought was cool enough. Now, Alex asked, what if um, uh, reality didn't uh, exist and you could um, make, make the world uh, the way you wanted it? Would you have a room full of arcade machines? And if so, uh, which arcades, which 10 arcades would be in there? Now, I thought it was uh, fun and I and I sort of uh, responded to a couple of people who did video responses to that. And I, but the question kept rolling around in my head. So I, in one of those uh, moments where my PC is booting or... I'm waiting for something to happen. I wrote a list. I wrote a list. So I'm going to go through that list. And I'm going to... I'm Even though... First I'm thinking... Uh, it's... It, what a ludicrous idea to have 10 arcade cabinets in your house. You know, you must be mad to... to I mean, I, I know one member of my family... Uh, my wife would never, I mean, she has trouble with these two, right? Uh, she'd never accept having 10 of them. But, I mean, talking about throwing reality out the window, I'm thinking, you know, if, I don't have a list of things that I want uh, if I should ever win the lottery or like win a million or five or 10 or whatever. I don't have a like a list of cars that I would buy or or a fancy a TV or you know I I I'd, I'd probably buy a nice gaming PC uh but all of a sudden I thought hmm what if I have millions uh why not just try and collect I mean if if you're going to stop working which uh I'm uh, well. I won't stop. I, I I I'd want to do things, right? Do things that are not to be considered work, and collecting and restoring and running a bunch of old arcade machines sounds like fun. And if you have a day that you don't want to do it, you do something else. So my life would revolve around. Uh, a couple of arcade now that, that uh, arcade games that idea sounded nice to me so i've got a I've, obviously i need some sort of valid reason i need some sort of level of reality uh to do this list so 
just imagine I've won seven and a half million euros and uh, that is enough for me to, to stop working. Uh, so what do I do? Well, I go hunting for arcade cabinets all over the world, right? Here we go. I put them in order, but I, who cares? It, it's, it's not really important. One of the machines that I have to have is an original Galaga machine. One of the cabinets that I have is a dedicated Galaga machine. Um, I also have another board that we'll get to, but Galaga... Galaga was that game, it, certainly not the first game that I saw, but Galaga is so much better than all the Galactians and Galaction 2 and uh, all the games that have Gal in it. Galaga is, is the one and only space, single screen space shooter that I like. And it's the sounds, the music... And the the colors of the enemies. Uh, uh, we used to have like one. It seems like every every cabinet that we had in our in our little chip shop had one guy that was good at that game. This game Galaga was John. Now, John's dad owned the cigarette shop around the corner, and John was a like a popular guy, but he was the he was the, remember the Honda MT5, like, you know that, like the, the motorcycle, is it, there, there, there were small, like, single cylinder, two stroke, uh, engines with a bike built around it, the like, uh, uh uh, 50 cc's would be too much, maybe 25 cc's, 30 maybe, you know, the, they were sort of uh, small motorcycles, but you know, uh, I don't know if, if that was a thing. It was a thing here. So the Honda MT5, it kind of looked like a, a dirt bike. For, for a while, the MT5 was the thing, was the hit, you know. You either had a, a Pug, which was sort of a ladies thing or uh you had um like the 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 the, the old like Kreidler and Zundup which were all German my, my my brother had a Kreidler which was uh which had a fantasy painted uh tank uh, a, a gas tank and and it was a really nice uh, thing he had it he had it uh, changed to 80 cc's. It was a, it was a fast no 50, and it and it was fast. So you had those guys, or you had like the MT5, which was a Honda. There was a section of people who had like the uh, Honda uh, the 50, the 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 SS50, SS50. Uh, which was a four-stroke engine, which was uh, completely different. But four strokes, they sounded amazing, and they ran very smoothly and, and very quietly. So, but Honda had the MT5, two-stroke engine, and then John comes along. I didn't even know this bike existed. I I know that he paid twelve hundred and fifty guilders for that, or I think his dad did. But he had the MB5. That was sort of the lame brother to the MT5. <laughs> I know that my my brother tried to like did a little contest where John would rev up his his bike, and my brother was standing in front of it trying to stop him. You know, that's trying to uh, and and he did it just to prove that the MB5 is kind of a lame bike. But John was the one who did Gallagher well. Because he had like the the shooty hand, which was very good. That's that's what Galaga was a a great game, and especially when when John was playing it, because that was you know you, you'd look in the in the in the right hand corner to see what the shields look like as you progress through the fields, like the five and the ten and the I don't know I, I don't 
I'm I'm pretty sure that nobody that I knew then uh, ever finished this game. Um, but it, it goes on a long way. There's there's uh, like full playthroughs of uh, Galaga on uh, online. So, but Galaga, like the 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 white cabinet and uh, with the uh, like the green bug on the side and uh, awesome. That's one that I definitely want. I think they make them new. When I when we were in Colorado, we were at a lake somewhere. Don't ask me which one. And there was a place by the lake, and and I walked in there. I think we just stopped to to drink or to have lunch, and there was one right there. And I thought, oh, this is so cool. I the the one that we had in the chip shop wasn't the original cabinet. It must have been some bootleg again. I think that the company that delivered all the arcades to our chip shop. It just just had boot bootlegs because, you know, I never saw a cabinet with artwork on the side. There were always that's why I have the cabinet that I have now, like the 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 the, the generic brown uh, wood veneer because it it's it's just fake. Never an a, an original. We we did have like a big arcade in town where they had originals, uh, but they were all stood together so i never got to see the artwork on the side so it's a it's a big shame so i'm 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 having fun learning about the uh the actual arcades so the second one that i definitely have to have and that there are originals and this is a long a long story crazy kong part two i know that probably some of you are thinking crazy kong was a, a bootleg uh it wasn't and it was uh essentially <coughs> when nintendo had trouble keeping up creating um donkey kong machines in japan they hired falcon another japanese company to create a game that was the same or similar um uh, which they did and they called it crazy kong and there's a crazy kong part one which looks uh, very bad. It was built on Crazy Climber hardware with the same sounds as Crazy Climber, same color palette. And then there was a Crazy Kong Part 2 where they updated the graphics and the colors and the sound. And the, but it always had the weird we are sound when Mario jumped. So, but then somehow um, th this cabinet that was made by uh, uh, Falcon under license by Nintendo that got bootlegged and nintendo of america when they were trying to grow their business in the united states they were actually suffering from bootlegged crazy kong uh cabinets and they sued i think it's allcom or al alcon or something some american company that was that happened to be importing these bootlegs and uh, they got sued right at the same time that nintendo was suing uh, Ikigami, Ikigami over uh, the ownership of code that they wrote for Nintendo as Nintendo were making Donkey Kong Jr. That's a long story. I'm, I've been doing research. I've been wanting to do a video about that. I'll do that in, at some point. Fact of the matter is that Crazy Kong was the first arcade video game that I ever saw, that I ever played. Uh, you can talk until your lungs are dry my version of that game is crazy kong with those sounds and, and no I, if, if i hear like a donkey kong machine dee, 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 i think it's fake i think it's 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 just it's just not real it, it's uh that sounds like bootleg to me right uh and then the stupid level order where you go from I mean, uh, it's for me. It's the it's the girders and the pies and the elevator and the rivet level, and that just repeats over and over again, and it becomes harder and harder. And Donkey Kong is like the girders, and then you get the pie level, and you go back to the girders, and it, I don't even know. It's it's too complicated. So for me, Donkey Kong is just a a cheap rip off. Of Crazy Kong. <laughs>
stick that in your pipe and smoke it, right? <laughs> so I'm going to have a Crazy Kong. The thing is, uh, uh, so um, Crazy Kong cabinets were were made uh the the boards were made by Falcon. I think I don't think Falcon actually programmed much if anything uh they 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 did port the code. Uh and I I think Nintendo just gave them the code and said, "Well, you solve the hardware problem because that's how Nintendo worked. They had nice ideas, but they hired Ikigami to execute them." So Ikigami actually programmed all of Crazy Kong. Nintendo did do nothing. Uh, the, uh, Ikigami built the hardware. And, and they entered into a contract where Ikigami created the, the hardware. They wrote the software based on the graphics and the, and, the, and the music by Nintendo. And then they made a contract where a Nintendo was going to buy exclusively all the boards from Ikigami. Which was fine. But during the process, Nintendo... I mean... If you've ever been in a company and in a situation like this, you uh, uh, what N Nintendo did was uh, look over Ikigami's shoulder just to, to learn how they did it. And, and, and when uh, uh, Donkey Kong Jr. came along, they said, well, we don't need Ikigami anymore. We, not, we, we know how it works. So they made Donkey Kong Jr., but they used the code that Ikigami wrote uh, for, uh, for Donkey Kong. Now, I know how this works because you have like the sprite order and and uh, like the object placement and how do you build the screens and how do you do the jumping and all that base code. They just took that and put that in Donkey Kong Jr. And then the court, Ikigami sued Nintendo over using their code without permission in Donkey Kong Jr. And at that point, you have to remember... Uh, Ownership of code just wasn't a legal thing yet, uh, 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 at least in, in, in video gaming. So uh, Nintendo got sued over something completely new and they had to figure out what to do. Now, uh, you can own like the, the intellectual property as that works in some countries. Like we came up with, uh, with the game design and the game idea, but... Uh, Ikigami wrote the code and owned the code. They had the copyright of the code, but that was still to be determined. And which it took years. It took until uh, far into the '90s. I think the end of the '90s when Ikigami and Nintendo uh, came to a settlement over that. So um, I don't have to make the video now anymore. I, I, I still may, but it's an interesting subject. So Crazy Kong. Third is Turtles. Now, n not the Teenage Mutant Hero slash Ninja Turtles, because I was too old to even like <coughs> the cartoon on TV uh, or the movies. Uh, certainly not <coughs> the game, and I've tried it. <coughs> it's not a bad game, but it just it doesn't register with me. No, there's a different game, Turtles, and I and I, sh I I'm, I'm going to show it. This one. This is the video pack version of the Turtles game. So, um, and it's graphically such a simple game and so effective that it ported well to the video pack. And this shows you how old the game is because it's on the video pack. Um, I'm not quite sure. Is it Konami? Is it a Konami game? Yeah, it's a Konami game. You have a little maze, uh, and it's and it's got a couple of <coughs> places where there's um, like a little egg, and you have to run there. As a question mark, you have to run there. It's either an enemy or it's like a baby turtle. It crawls on your back, and you have to take it to a, a little house that appears. All the while, you're uh, trying to run away from. Uh, bugs and you can leave poops behind and when a bug runs into a poop the bug goes uh it it dies or it freezes for a while something like that 
So, Turtles was, I mean, I didn't have a lot of money. And uh, it's not like uh, we put in like 10 or 20p or, or 25 cents. We put in a gilder. Like, like imagine one of, you, you know, your, your one coin, your dollar or your whatever. That's what we put in. So I, the, there were many days that I didn't have that with me. And if I did, I had to choose between buying something to eat uh, or doing this. And, and I don't think that my parents would would give me money to, to spend on, on stuff. So, I mean, they provided uh, for me, uh, but uh, uh, gaming money... <laughs> snack money <laughs> no way man uh, that's why i was always trying to sell stuff uh because i needed money uh to put in to put in the arcades if i did have money um if i if i put it in galaga and i had a bad day gone money you know if i put it in crazy kong if i had a bad day money gone and i and i, and I remember you know dying three times in a row on the first screen it is, uh, no mercy, you know, no mercy. <coughs> I wasn't very good. Uh, but turtles, I was, I was confident, uh, that I could play that. And I, and I, and I, I'd play for a while and I'd, I'd, I'd have my, my, my money back in a sense, you know, I'd, I'd, it'd be worth the money. Then along comes kangaroo. Kangaroo was that weird game. And it had like the 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 happy music, and you had the the bell, and the little monkeys, and the throwing apples, and it had that weird graphical. Uh, I think they were trying to go for scan lines, but they sort of overdid it. <laughs> it it looks a bit weird. It it almost looks like it's uh like it's running on vector hardware. It's not. It, it's raster, but it's it's kind of weird uh, looking. Uh, but I thought it was attractive, and I I don't think I ever made it past the second screen. But again, I could play it for a while, and uh, but I, it was there for a short time. But it always kangaroo was always stuck with me. I, I like kangaroo as a game, uh, but I but I, uh, I I wonder about the third and fourth levels. I should I, I I have it on Mame, so I should probably just uh, try it. But uh, made by Sun Sunco, I think the hardware or the 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 cabinet was made by them. Um, then one uh, game that was never in our uh, local chip shop was Outrun. We went to Fortuna. Which was like the big arcade in the in the city. It, 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 like the, the the they had two large halls. Basically, they were primarily deep. You could walk way to the back, and and, and in the front, as you came in, that's where all the happening machines were. That's where all the gauntlets and the and the and the and the Street Fighters and 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 all the fighting games were. And way in the back were where the Trons were, and, and you might uh, find a Pac-Man, and you might find a Pengo, and all the all the classic arcades were in the back. And then in in the hall next to that, <coughs> there used to be pinball machines, and they sort of uh, tried. Uh, and then um, I think there were video arcades there as well at one point. So it was like two halls. It was that place was happening. It was filled to the brim. It was. Uh, the only thing that you couldn't get there was, uh, something to eat and something to drink. All you could get was coins. It was like a, like a little booth in the center where they would sell you coins. You just walk in, you'd buy coins and, and, you, and you'd go. It was, it was great. You know, it was a great place. I'd come out of there steaming, literally steam rising off my body because I'd been gaming so much. It was, I, uh, the uh, Fortuna is still there, but now it's all slot machines. You know, at one point on the right side of the place, they just started with slot machines and then that slowly took over. And now, you know, you have to 
I don't know, before you come in. I mean, it's like when you want to walk in there now, you you feel like you're doing something wrong, you know, uh, and there's men in suits looking at you. It's 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 like a dirty casino or something. I I I feel I I it's been years since I've been in there, but uh I wouldn't go in there now. Be, mainly because it's slot machines, but even if they had arcades, I mean, the arcade times, that was a, 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 was an open time. It was open to everyone. There were kids there, <coughs> and at night, the kids would go, and then it was sort of a cool place, you know. Before you went clubbing, you'd go in there, spend all your money there, so you'd have nothing left to, to drink. <laughs> so OutRun was in the in the right in the doorway. It was the first machine, and it was the full-blown... Uh, everything on it, uh, thing outrun there, uh, and it, it's the same experience that everyone's had. The music, you know, the the sound shower and uh, everything on it, everything, and it, it's it's sort it's a machine that not everyone um, could like drive to the finish. Sometimes someone would, and it would be fun to watch. Because let's face it, you know, most of the time we just watch. <coughs> I could go in there and not spend a dime and just watch people play games. Um, and then you'd come in there and there'd be a different machine, you know, and and it would be so daunting looking or so uninteresting looking that you'd uh, that you'd never played until you watched someone or the like those nights where there's people bunched around a, uh, one of those fighting machines. Now, I, I never liked fighting games, but four guys having a game. Oh, that must have, that must have been Gauntlet, the four guys. But the fighting games, there were always people doing that. And you couldn't even watch because there's so many people around it. And I, I wasn't particularly tall. Uh, so I'd, 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 I'd be grateful with people hanging around those machines because they wouldn't be playing on the rest of the machines. So Outrun would definitely be one of the machines that I that I want there. So Galaga, Crazy, Crazy Kong, Part 2, Turtles, Kangaroo, and Outrun so far. That's five. <laughs> now, this thing I never saw in any of those arcades. I played a Star Wars arcade on the Commodore 64 for the first time, and I was nuts for it. I loved it. And now when you ask people, say, oh, it's got frame rate issues, and it's oh, it's, it's not good, and the controls are shit, and it and that. I loved it. I didn't know any better. I loved it. I loved it so much that I had to, I mean, because my friend Frank, who had all the Commodore 64 games in the world, as far as I was concerned, he didn't have Star Wars, which I thought was nuts because I thought he had everything. So I, I called around to friends of mine who I thought had many games and none of them had Star Wars until there was this guy who lived near Frank and he's sort of a, an acquaintance, not really a friend. Uh, you know, and I wasn't very, I wasn't a very confident person. I, I didn't just go up to anyone and, and, and gave them a piece of my mind or, you know, I was sort of shy, but I wanted Star Wars. So I called this guy up. I said, I, I've been told you have Star Wars and I want a copy. And he said, okay, that's, that's fine. So he gave me a copy and I was happy with that. So Star Wars, and I think the first time that I played the Star Wars cabinet, uh, was uh, in Manchester. It must have been Manchester. Filling up here. Uh, and I, I, I heard that there are several. Uh, that, that there's this. There's a sit down version, but I, I, I'm only familiar with the stand up version and the controls. Uh, you know, where you can go like this and, and like this is exactly what you need for this game. It's a vector-based game, 3D sort of, kind of. Um, and I, I love that game. I love that game. It, it's, uh, it's, it's a tough game. 
but it lets you live for a long time. You know, you can take a lot of damage before you actually die. Uh, and I, Star Wars Arcade is one that I definitely would want to have in my in my collection. Although I didn't play it when I was younger. The same goes for the next game, uh, F Zero. Is that weird? Uh, I think Sega Nintendo combination arcade machine. Um, a while back, I went with Irwin and Mark Lacto and um, Castardo to this uh, arcade in Sutomir, and they and they had this machine. And I thought, oh great, you know, it's 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 like uh, it's like Wipeout. Uh, so uh, and and uh, to be fair, um, uh, it's it's a good game. Uh, and it and it probably as uh, as far as arcade machines go. I mean, I don't think there's a Wipeout arcade machine. So F Zero, the arcade machine kicks Wipeout's ass. Uh, easily uh, on the consoles and on the PC, though. I mean, F Zero on the I think the Super Nintendo. It's a load of crap, you know. Uh, y- y- you have to sort of really imagine that it's a good game for it to be a good game. But I I don't think it's a good. It, it doesn't match the the Wipeout series that we had on the PS One. That's been amazing. <coughs> and uh, but the arcade machine uh, again. Uh, uh, a sit down machine i i sat down in it and i played it and it just clicked with me you know i it just it just worked for me i and i i thought it was a fun game and i i didn't get any nausea or whatever it just you know i could play that for hours and i and i loved it so it, i i'm going to have to have an f0 machine and i think even there's like a remote kind of play possibility um i, I I would uh, so that you can like compare scores, maybe even race against each other. That'd be nice. Then uh, a machine that I I just didn't think uh, things like that were possible. This was in the Fortuna arcade, uh, and it was Afterburner. But again, the uh, the big setup, you know, where you sit in it and you have the the control stick, not a stand up cabinet. You sit in it. And the whole seat goes like this, you know. It just it, it didn't add too much, but ha- just being moved around <laughs> was just cool. And it was such a fast-paced game, you know. Half the time, I I I wouldn't know what the hell was going on, you know. I I I'd, I'd blow up, and I and I and I and I wouldn't know where the missile had come from that it that it killed me. But the the power of that game. You know the the size of it, the the speed of it, and I was playing it, and and I it made me feel more powerful than I was. You know, you felt like you were really, well, <coughs> really doing to not really flying a fighter jet because I, you know, you probably couldn't survive uh, moving a fighter jet that quickly with an untrained body, but. Being in that game just it just opened up. I mean, it, it's it's a level of immersion that you couldn't get from a stand-up cabinet, right? Uh, so, I'm I'm guessing the Star Wars arcade uh, is 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 probably, you know, would probably bring the same thing. Um, but I'd have to experience that. But in 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 Afterburner, I did that, and I like. I mean, there's some pretty good ports of Afterburner on consoles and on. <laughs> on home computers <clears throat> but like space harrier a game that i never liked uh i was glad to see that there was a a port of that on the commodore 64 which was decent i still didn't like the game though uh but afterburner definitely definitely a game that i would uh I, i'd probably get bored with first as you continue, it's sort of an outrun in the sky, isn't it? I liked it. Then, <clears throat> every time I, I, I walked in this Fortuna arcade, these cabinets uh, that I that I talk of were always on the right side of the arcade. For some reason, there was a, a difference between 
walking in that place on the right side were always the hip and happening ones on the left side i don't even remember the games that were on that side except dragon's lair now someone told me i mean the big thing about all of these uh arcade games uh were how graphically realistic they were how poor the ports were that we had on our ColecoVisions and on our Commodore 64s. And we'd think, meh, you know, it's the game, but it's really not. So, and all of a sudden, my friend Peter, who apparently went, you know, had been to the arcade one Thursday night, and he said, well, there, there's an arcade game there. And it's a cartoon. So what do you mean it's a cartoon? If you you, know, you tell me it's a cartoon, I'm thinking I can watch cartoons on TV. You know, uh, am I am I putting money in it to watch a cartoon? No, no, no. He said it's an interactive cartoon. So he, he tried to explain um, like you have to time your 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 movements, and I and I didn't get it until I saw it. And I, and it's it's just a normal size arcade. I think maybe it's a it's a little bit higher, but when I saw that, you know, I was just blown away by the, by, by that, by, by, by that, the sound. And this was perfect in, in, in my idea of video games, either they had to be like a hundred percent realistic, which at that point in time in the 1980s was not possible. It just did not exist. Um, so a, a real cartoon, like a hand-drawn cartoon, and you were playing it, that, that's like like playing uh, uh, Uncharted 4 or uh, uh, God of War, you know, where you feel like you're, or Hellblade, where you feel like you're part of a movie, like you're interacting in a movie. The only downside was it, that you weren't really interacting. You know, it's, the interaction was limited. The light flashes here, poop, you press left. Sometimes there's no light and you have to sort of do what's logical or press a button. Or... But I didn't mind. The quality of the game was so good uh, that I, I was just blown away by this. The, the, the other downside to this game, and it wasn't one guilder, it was two and a half. Like we had like a one guilder coin and a two and a half guilder coin. There was no two, just two and a half. So, and they they asked two and a half for this, which is not nobody played it, nobody played it because it was too expensive. I bought, and make a note of that. I bought Dragon's Lair, two Escape from Singe's Castle, on tape. Make a note of that as well on tape. Uh, for the Commodore 64. I can remember, I can distinctly remember getting a lift <coughs> from this weird... We had this couple in the neighborhood. A, a girl and a guy. I don't remember the guy so well, but we sort of ha were in touch with the girl. And these were like biker people without bikes they drove opal mantas and opal manta if if you're not familiar with the opal manta type um <laughs> may, maybe i can find a picture but it it, it would be sort of uh, how do i explain this you know someone who who sort of uh, uh pimps a car but the wrong way, that that kind of thing. So, <laughs> this girl, long blonde hair, in her opal manta. We were on our way to the to the city to get this game. Me and my friend Iwan, I think I can't even remember. <clears throat> but she gave us a ride for some reason. She gave us a ride, uh, and it wasn't a normal ride. And you know, back in in it was a white opal manta. A black opal manta with black, a white opal manta with black striping. I'd say it right, and I had to cram myself in the back 
and I, I can't remember what age I was, but it must have been around 10 or something. And I used to get nausea, you know, I like car sick, especially in the back. So, And she was driving like sort of a maniac. Not really a maniac, but she was driving fast and going through the corners. And I think she was trying to show off or something. Really weird. So I made sure I got the bus home or the or the train or whatever. But I, she she wasn't there. You know, she, she just drove us a, a bit and we walked into town. And I bought this game. And I was really proud of it. And of course, the friends that were with me at that point were expecting to play the game with me, which... I didn't mind, you know, they were my friends or whatever, until we got home and we run into a guy called Attilio. Attilio was, his parents were Italian. We had a couple of Italians in the neighborhood. And I did not, Attilio was a kid who always smelled like piss, right? He he was, I didn't like him. He, he was not, he was part of the group, but he was not my friend. I never went to his house. He never came to my house, but we ran into fucking Attilio first time I buy a new game. And he walks up with us. And he figures out that I I got this game. So what am I going to do? You know, Am I going to send him away? Am I going to say, no, no, you're not part of it. You're not going to see it. I'm not like that. I, I, I don't like shutting people out, even if they smell like piss. So this one time that I buy a game, lo and behold, Attilio is there. I think he was disappointed over the fact that the tape took so long to load. And then when he saw the end result, he didn't like what he saw and he went away. So <laughs> I was happy with that. I like the game. Uh, this is the the game where you um, where you where you fall on the platform and the platform drops down and you get the clouds blowing and uh i don't remember much else but i i really enjoyed that game escape from singe's castle with the whole death animation and uh, everything it was really well done i think it, it may have been an activision game i've been trying because my copy of the game came in a cardboard box never been able to find it all i see is tape <coughs> tape games in like the the double case i have I have Dragon's Lair. I think it's version one, um, but it's 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 in a in a jewel case and not in the cardboard one. So I hope to find that game just out of uh, you know for reasons. So Dragon's Lair, Dragon's Lair is a cabinet that I want in there. Maybe even Space Ace. Uh, but by the time I'd I'd gotten used to Dragon's Lair and the fact that I couldn't play it, Space Ace came along and I thought mm, you know. Uh, same game, different graphics. Let's let's not. I I wasn't as impressed with Space Ace. So the last one, uh, because we've been going for a long time and my throat is starting to hurt, uh, is Robotron. I have to have Williams Robotron 2048. Uh, again. A cabinet that I never saw. The first time I played uh, Robotron 2048 was in Manchester on a cabinet. Uh, the actual first time I played the game was on my Nintendo 64 because the Nintendo 64 version is the best home version of Robotron uh, because of the controls. If you have a good uh, controller uh, for the Nintendo 64, that is a, a perfect way of playing the game. Uh, it, because it's a twin stick shooter, and uh, I think Nintendo 64 version is like the 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 tilted plane, and you sort of see it in 3D. But it's got the pace, and it's got the it's got everything. It's 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 that paciness of uh, Robotron. Uh, again, Robotron. I don't think I've ever passed a level three. It's a really really difficult game, uh, but still a very enjoyable one. So that's my arcade cabinet collection for when i win seven and a half million uh i'll be making burgers on the barbecue and i will we'll be drinking beer and i'm inviting everyone um who wants to come to have a party with me so thanks for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye